I've got some data points that I want to run through with you. A brand new CNN ORC survey just released this week, although conducted before the attack in San Bernardino. There you see it. Donald Trump at the top of the heap with 36% of the vote. And Carl, what I find of significance is that he wins all the internals, including when you ask the question, regardless of who you're voting for, who's best equipped to handle ISIS, Trump comes out with 46% of Republican support, followed by Ted Cruz at 15. Analyze that for me. Why is he perceived among Republicans as being best equipped to deal with ISIS? Because he looks the toughest. I mean, he is, uh, look, he, he has a soundbite. And uh, the people who are attracted to Trump are, are not really that interested in the, you know, in policy statements that are not really interested in the fact that he's been all over the board on this. Remember, it was a matter of weeks ago in which he dismissed the ISIS threat, threat said leave it to the Russians to take care of. Then he said, well, you know what, let ISIS take out uh, uh, Assad in Syria. And, and, and now he wants to bomb the expletive out of ISIS. So they really don't care the specifics of the policies. As long as he's up there pounding the podium and saying, I'm going to be so tough, there's an element inside the Republican Party that's attracted to that strong man image. Uh, now, whether or not it's enough to uh, to win the nomination is really up in the air. And I'd, I'd be ca careful about reading too much into any one given poll. This particular poll is an outlier in terms of the, the sense of his strength. If you look at the real clear politics average, he's sitting there in the, in the high 20s, 27, 28, 29. But he has shown an inability. There's been an episodic poll or two that show him higher than that and some that show him lower than that. But the average is in the high 20s and in resistance inside the Republican Party. And, and look, he has the worst, uh, the, the, the highest unfavorables and lowest, uh, excuse me, uh, lowest uh, uh, favorables and highest negatives of any of the major candidates. And then you take him into the general election campaign and his image gets even worse. But nevertheless, in this same survey, and I, I think it was echoed by the Quinnipiac data that came out this week, 52% say they believe he has the strongest chance to win the general election. I think Carl Rove just told me you don't agree with that. Well, look, uh, no, I agree that that's what they think now. But if you go back to 2012, you'll find a period of time where people thought Herman Cain was, had, was, had the strongest chance of becoming the nominee. And Newt Gingrich had the highest chance of being the nominee. In the aftermath of the New Hampshire primary in 2000, people thought John McCain had the best chance of becoming the Republican nominee. So you need to differentiate between the questions in a poll that ask people to comment as spectators and pundits and those that say, what do you believe about what you're going to do? Okay, so I'm asking you directly, what do you believe? Do you believe that he's the Republican who has the best shot of winning the White House, yes or no? No. Who is? Well, I don't know, but I think I think he has a high floor and a low ceiling. And I think you look you have to look at the candidates who have higher favorables and lower negatives, whom a lot more people could see themselves voting for. Uh, than, than Trump. Trump has Trump Trump has the strength that comes from being a strong, definitive personality. He also has the weakness that that that, that includes things like disparaging uh, Latinos, that it involves uh, mocking a disabled reporter, that it involves calling every one of his opponents a clown, a loser, and a moron. These are not the kind of things that unite the party. And in order to win the nomination, a candidate has to unite the party at some point. You can't simply win the nomination by saying, everybody else who's running against me is a jerk, and, and so are their supporters, in essence. And, uh, you know, calling people and mocking people inside the party who who are accomplished individuals, who have supporters and, and adherents of their own, the, the kind of things that he calls them is not, a, is not, in my opinion, a winning recipe for either uniting the party or winning the nomination with the United Party and carrying it into the general election. You mentioned my book. Uh, you, you, we have a candidate in the 1896 campaign, uh, William Jennings Bryan, who excoriates most uh, a lot a big chunk of the country when he announces that he's going to go accept his uh, the party's nomination in new york he announces at the train station lincoln nebraska that i go on to the enemy's country and he attacks uh, his opponents as tools of the wall street bloodsuckers and the money grubbers of lombard street and the shylocks of the rothschilds and i mean he uses language that is designed to divide the, the american people and it, and he helps divide the american people but he helps divide them against himself particularly when his opponents William, uh, William McKinley uses language designed to draw the country together, in which he says, we're all in this together. We are not, we are a common country, no east, no west, nor north, no south, quoting George Washington. 
here's what I thought of as I read your book. I thought of, and I've, and I've got a slide to show you on this. I thought of the fact that in 1988, Papa Bush, Bush 41, gets 59% of the white vote, and it earns him 426 electoral votes. 2012, Mitt Romney, same percentage of the white vote. Guess what? It's only worth 206 electoral votes due to a variety of factors, not the least of which is the changing demographic of the country. What I learned from your book is that William McKinley saw the need to build the tent. So who is the tent builder in this array of GOP candidates? Well, it's almost everybody except Donald Trump and to a lesser extent Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz says the way we can win this election is to get a missing army of conservatives who have historically reliably voted Republican and then didn't do so in 2012 because Mitt Romney was a liberal. Well, that's simply not true. You look at the exit polls, there are 580,000 more self-identified conservatives who turn out to vote in 2012 than the previous high in 2008.